You aren't as strong as you think you are. Probably you've made a whole bunch of commitments to yourself about things that you're going to change in your life and you failed to keep them. Maybe you failed every single time you've tried, but for some reason every time you think this time is going to be different. Well, I've got news for you. This time ain't going to be any different if you're not doing anything differently. If your willpower has failed you every single time in the past, it's going to fail you now. If you want to get a different result, you've got to change something about what you're doing. And one of the things that you can change is your environment. In this video, I'm going to show you why changing your environment is so important and the best ways to do it. If you want to improve yourself, if you want to improve your life, then you cannot rely on willpower. Willpower is like the battery in your car. If you drive your car with the only energy being provided from the battery, well, you're going to end up stuck on the side of the road with a dead battery pretty soon. Which is what I explained in my last video here, all about willpower. So if you haven't watched that video already, go ahead and watch that video. So pause this video and go watch that video. And only after that will I tell you the secrets that will be revealed in the rest of this video. Okay, so now you're all done watching that other video about willpower. You did watch it, right? So now you know the power of passion and the power of habit. And to further the analogy, since the willpower is like the battery in your car, the passion is like the engine, and habit is like momentum. And there's one more variable in that equation, which is quite possibly the most important one, and that is environment. And environment is like driving conditions. Okay, so think about if you're driving uphill, up a mountain, in the rain on a dirt road, a muddy dirt road, in the middle of the night where you can barely see. And then compare that to another scenario where you're driving down a hill on a nice paved road in the middle of a beautiful day. In that first case, the driving is going to be very difficult, right? In the second case, it's going to be very easy. And not only is it going to be very easy in the second case, but also it's basically done for you. The environment is all you need because if you think about it, if you're driving downhill on a nice flat paved road, then you don't need a battery. You don't even need an engine. You don't need momentum. You could just let the car idle the whole way and, and the environment will literally drive it to its destination. So imagine the power if you could have something like that driving you towards your goals. So you don't even need to have your engine running. You don't need to be able to start your engine. Your environment is just pushing you to the place where you want to go without you even thinking about it. Now, in reality, you don't want to rely on your environment 100% because your environment changes from time to time. You can't control it completely, but there are a lot of things that you can do to make your environment actually work for you instead of work against you. Now, there's three major components to environment, and all three of them are very important. The first component is distractions. So let's say that you're working at home and you see the TV, and the TV makes you remember that you missed the latest South Park episode, and then you go watch South Park because you know, you're distracted by the TV. Well, you could change your environment by getting rid of the TV, or by putting the TV somewhere where you don't see it from your workspace. Or you could just loan the TV to a friend for a while so that you don't ever see it. So you're laser focused on your goals and you don't have that thing distracting you. Or maybe your distraction is an Xbox or a PlayStation. Get rid of it, you know? Give it to your mom to hold for a while if you don't want to just dump it, right? Maybe it's Facebook or Instagram. Well, what I've done, because I used to be super addicted to both Facebook and Instagram, I'd just be like compulsively pulling out my phone and scrolling through it. What I did was just deleted the icons from my home screen. Or if you want to go further, you could delete it off your phone completely. And definitely get rid of the notifications. And as I explained in this video, make a solid commitment to yourself that you're not going to look at Facebook or Instagram one or two times per day or whatever your number is and then keep to it. Maybe your girlfriend or your mom or your roommate is constantly interrupting you when you're trying to work. Well, have a conversation with that person, right? Tell that person to that, that this is your work time and, and you need to have focus during that time. Or go to a different place where you're not going to be distracted. If you have a roommate that constantly annoys you, get your own place. Or if you, if you do better job working in a coffee shop, right, where, where nobody's going to bother you because nobody knows you there, that might be a good option. Or maybe your distraction is beer or cigarettes or going to the beach. I mean, I can see the beach from my window, so it's, it's something that's tempting for me to stop working and just go to the beach. Which, by the way, if you want to know how to live on the beach all the time on a fairly modest budget, check out, I'll put a link in the description below to Digital Nomad University, which will tell you all about uh, how to live the digital nomad lifestyle, which lets you live in pretty incredible places at a very low price. 
Anyway, so whatever it is in your life, you probably have something that distracts you. We all have things that distract us. So go ahead and put a comment below. Tell me what is the biggest distraction that keeps you from doing the things that you really need to be doing. Okay, now the second big component to your environment is the people. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful or enjoyable, please do me a huge favor. Hit the thumbs up icon because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button because that means that you will get all my videos immediately when they come out. You'll be the first to get them. So the second component is people, and when I say people, I don't mean in terms of distractions. Like I said before, maybe your girlfriend or your roommate distracts you. I'm talking about the people in your life, how they support you or tear you down. So when you're trying to do something different, when you're trying to do something bigger and better and make your own life better, do the people support you? Do they try to help you? Do they try to offer you advice? Or do they tell you that you're stupid and that you're gonna fail? Do they get jealous because you're actually trying to do something while they're settling for mediocrity? Reminds me of a story that I know I've told before, so I'll give you a short version, but a guy was walking along a fishing pier and saw a guy who was a crab fisherman and he had a bucket full of crabs that he had caught. And he looked into the bucket and these crabs were all kind of piled on top of each other, but there was one crab that was trying to climb over all the other crabs and trying to get to the rim of the bucket where he could escape. And so he told the fisherman, he said, hey, I think one of your crabs is about to escape. And the fisherman says, don't worry about it. Watch what happens. And so the guy watches and this crab is, is crawling over the other crabs and he's, he's fighting for freedom and he's just at the edge of the bucket and he's about to get out. And then suddenly the other crabs below him in the bucket grab his legs and pull him back down. And unfortunately, for so many of us, that's how our so-called friends and family treat us. If we try to make something better of our lives, if we try to escape mediocrity, while well, the people who have settled for mediocrity, who are around us, that uh, they don't like that because that makes them feel bad, so they pull us back down onto their level. So let me know in the comments, do the people around you, do they try to help you? Do they support you? Do they actually desire good things for you in your life? Or do they try to pull you down into the bucket of mediocrity? Let me know in the comments. And you know, I've talked about this in this video, all about how you can have a drastic change in environment if you move out of the country. But you don't really have to do anything quite so drastic. I mean, moving out of the country is awesome because you can live right on the beach for a fraction of the cost and then be working on your online business and be away from all of the things that remind you of your old life. So there's a lot of benefit to that, but you don't have to do that, right? You get to choose who you hang out with. And probably, if you're like most people, you you have some of both types of people in your life, right? You have some people that genuinely care about you and want you to be better and will support you. And then you have other people who pretend to be your friends, pretend to care about you, but really you're just an instrument for them to feel good. And if you start getting better, then all of a sudden you stop making them feel good and they'll try to bring you down. So chances are, if you think about it enough, you know who fits into each category and you can start spending more time with the people who actually care about you and actually support you and avoid as much as possible the people who are going to bring you down. And then one other really cool way that you can do this that I heard of just recently is through an entrepreneur house. These guys will, will get together and they will rent a big house, maybe like five bedroom house, there'll be five guys and they're all focused on the same path. They're all focused towards entrepreneurship. So there's not a lot of partying, maybe in like certain specified times. Uh, they're not gonna be distractions, right? Everybody is focused on the same path, which is the perfect environment because if everybody around you is focused on improvement, on reaching a goal, then you're just going to be working towards that goal just by default. You're just going with the flow. You're just going with the current, right? That's what I was talking about, about that putting the car in neutral and just coasting downhill. Okay, so people are super important to your environment. Now the third component, which is perhaps the most important, is your spiritual environment. This is something I can't explain quite as well. It's something that's pretty individual to each person. But if you know yourself, if you observe your own behavior and your own feelings, then you will recognize that this is true. You know that sometimes you're in a good mood and sometimes you're in a bad mood. 
Sometimes you feel like fighting with people and sometimes you feel like lifting people up. Sometimes you feel like the whole world is, exists to support you and other times you feel like the whole world is against you. Sometimes you feel powerful like you can do anything you want and other times you feel completely weak and useless. Why? Why is that? Have you ever bothered to ask yourself why that is? You should because it's of supreme importance to how productive you are and what that comes from is what I call your spiritual environment. Now if you want to learn more about that, if this is a really deep, really broad topic that I'm only going to treat very superficially in this video, but if you want to know more, I highly recommend you check out the Spirits book by Alan Kardec. I will put the link, the Amazon link, down in the description so you can check that out. I definitely recommend it. When you start diving into the spirituality, oftentimes where you end up is this Eastern philosophy that's full of these kind of paradoxes and, and analogies that are really hard to understand. Like they say that you should have to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time, or you have to be everyone and no one at the same time. And maybe with years of meditation and studying, you can kind of figure out what that means. But I really like the Spirits book because it's very no-nonsense, blunt answers. Just like, here's the question, here's the answer in the most straight to the point terms possible. But I will go over a few things you might have noticed are affecting those things about your spirit. One of those is the weather. Probably you've heard of seasonal affective disorder, or SAD for short, where people just feel bad when the weather's bad. Another one you might have noticed is cleanliness. If your home or your workspace is clean and neat and orderly, probably you feel a lot more motivated and you're a lot more productive than if you're living in a pigsty. And if you're a fan of Jordan Peterson like I am, you know, he always tells you to clean your room. And his reasoning for that is that if you can put something in order on a very small scale, well, that's one proof to yourself that you can put things in order. So if you can do that on a small scale, then maybe you can do it on a little bit bigger scale and you can build up from there. And while I think that's absolutely true, I also think that there's a deeper, more spiritual element to that. And that is that you are attracting better, more productive energies and you are repelling the negative energies that are going to bring you down if you have that clean and orderly environment. Another thing is the people that you have around you and it doesn't even necessarily matter how the people behave, you can get that energy just from the people's presence. So if somebody is really angry about something or somebody is just a very negative person, even if they keep it to themselves, they're still going to pass off that energy to you. And the same is true with positivity. If somebody is happy and positive all the time, they don't have to talk about how they're happy and positive. You just know that energy transfers to you and infects you. And probably some of you are thinking this is crazy, hippie, woo-woo, magical thinking, but the truth is this is something that's pretty uncontroversial among psychologists. Like everybody recognizes that this is true, even though traditional science or psychology is just completely incapable of explaining why. And then also your own words and your own thoughts are contributing to your spiritual environment. Are you expressing positive sentiments or negative sentiments? Are you thinking positive thoughts or negative thoughts? Do you love or do you hate the people that are around you? Those thoughts and those words become your spiritual surroundings. So it's really worth controlling what you say and what you think. And if that seems difficult, especially to control what you think, well, I assure you it is possible. It's what I call mental discipline. And you can discipline your mind by taking different viewpoints, like I explained in this video, where if you recognize that everything bad, everything negative that happens in your life is actually happening to help you get to a greater purpose, if you have that faith, then you can have a much more positive attitude and that will allow you to have much more positive thoughts. So I want to hear from you. Is mental discipline something that you have been cognizant of? Is that something that you notice? Are you trying to direct your thoughts more to the positive and less in the negative? Let me know in the comments whether or not you actively do that. So you can make enormous improvements to your life just by changing your environment. Even if you do nothing else, even if your habits still suck, even if your willpower still sucks, even if you don't have any passion for anything, just improving your environment will make you so much more productive and make your life so much better. If you want to learn more about how to have the right mindset to have positive thoughts all the time, watch all of this video. I really recommend it. 
And of course, if you found this video helpful and you want to be one of those people that supports the other people in your life, you don't want to be one of the crabs pulling people down, you want to be the opposite, you want to be holding up the people that you care about, then share this video. It might make a real difference in somebody's life. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.